This is Lee with Crash Test Hobbies showing you how to set up your radio for a flying wing. Several different plug styles you can use. These are bullet plugs and they are the most common. There's the male plug on the motor and the female plug on the SC. And simply by trading any two of the plugs, you can reverse motor direction. To start with, clean your soldering iron tip and pre-solder it. Put some heat shrink on the motor wires and as you notice I've got my soldering iron clamped in a vise that way I have two hands free to use and I put a little soldering flux on the bullet connector and pre-solder the wire, pre-solder the bullet connector and then just melt the two together they get hot you need to hold it with pliers slide the heat shrink up onto the bullet connector and just use the flame and shrink the heat shrink. Now on the speed control, you do the same. Flux the wires, pre-solder the wires. And in this particular case, I'm going back to the motor and I'm putting the female connector over the male connector just so that it helps to prevent me from burning my fingers. You notice there's small holes on these bullet plugs. Put them up or your solder will run out of the joint before you even get the parts put together. And solder the three plugs together. Once they're cool, you can scoot the heat shrink down the plug and then just use a flame and shrink the heat shrink. Now these are Dean's four pin plugs. I only need three of the pins, so I'm going to clip off the fourth pin. And I like to use these on my small motors that have smaller wires. And what's nice is you just flip the plug over and it reverses motor direction. Showing you how to solder these, first clean the tip of the soldering iron and put heat shrink onto in this case it's the speed control. I'm going to always put the female plug on the speed control because you don't want any shorting between posts that could burn out the speed control. Now you can see I'm going to have trouble here because uh, I don't have an extension to hook these with and I'm going to burn my fingers. So I'm going to plug two plugs together and I'm going to pre-tin the posts on the plug after having flexed them and I make sure which end is female and I solder the center one first and then attempting to solder one of the outside ones I am burning my fingers so let's get I have another plug that's got a motor on it so I'm going to use it to be a heat sink to get some of that heat away from my fingers but just since I've got solder on both the wire and on the motor on the plug post uh, they, all I have to do is heat them up and they will melt together. Then I scoot the heat shrink down to the plug and use a flame to shrink the heat shrink. I'm now going to show you how to solder the battery plug onto the speed control. In this particular case we're using an XT60. Start by flexing the wires and pretending them with solder. These plugs are fairly hefty plugs and uh, it takes a lot of heat to get this solder to melt on flow onto those connection points. So it's good to use some sort of a heat sink even if it's just another plug. But don't ever use a battery. That'd be very dangerous. You'd short it out and could possibly hurt yourself. The red wire goes to the square end of the plug and the black wire goes to the pointed side of the plug. Your red wire on the speed control always goes to the red wire on your battery. So you can kind of look at those and determine which way that has to be soldered on to make sure that you're getting it on right. Once you're satisfied with the position and the angle, I think in this particular case the wire wasn't pointing straight out of the plug so I remelted it. And now I'm going to scoot the heat shrink up and use a flame to shrink the heat shrink. Some people want to wire the speed control directly to the motor. If you are going to do this, you 
go back and put heat shrink on your speed control. And pre tin the wires. Do the same thing on your motor. Flux wires, then put some solder on each wire. And solder the three wires directly from the motor to the speed control. This is actually a very simple way, but to reverse direction, you either have to flip the reversing switch for the throttle on your transmitter, or you have to unsolder and resolder two of the three wires that are on your motor. Now this is a prop adapter, can go on one of two ways. Different prop adapters are quite different, but depending on whether you're doing a pusher prop or a puller prop, will determine how you put this particular uh, prop adapter on the motor shaft. The prop is held on with an O-ring. I use the number 12 and number 15 O-rings that I get at a hardware store. And then I like to take out the set screws on the bottom of the motor. Now you can use these set screws, they work fine, but I like to go back and put three millimeter screws into those set screw slots makes them easier to work with plus you don't strip out your small allen wrench and putting the screw on just turn it in be very careful as you do this because you can over tighten the bolts and bend your bearings in your motor you have a lot of power when using a three millimeter hex head screw now mounting the motor base plate to the stainless steel motor mount. I'm using three millimeter screws and I'm using some lock nuts that actually have a fiber ring in them that hold them in place. I only use two on the smaller motors and go ahead and tighten them down so that they're held in place. Line the hole of the motor mount up with the hole of the base and tighten them down. Then Put your motor back in place and you can tighten down the larger screws which are, as I said, easier to work with. Once again, showing how the O-ring goes on. You can reverse that for whether it's a pusher or a puller plane. I'm now going to bind my transmitter to my receiver. I'm going to put the bind plug in the receiver. Plug my battery to my speed control and my speed control to my motor. I turn my transmitter off, and while holding the bind plug up, I flip the transmitter back on. Notice the light in the receiver will flash, and when it finally binds, the light comes on, my servos work, and I remove the bind plug now from the receiver, because if I don't, the receiver will try to re-bind again when I flip the power back on. This is the end of video three. Thanks for watching. Have fun with your build.